Hi everyone, I'm Dino Tali. In this video, I want to show you something that I didn't know until yesterday, which is just how easy it is to migrate away from using Travis CI and using GitHub Actions instead. This video is going to be useful to you even if you aren't using Travis right now, and if you just have an R package and you want to start using GitHub Actions, then this is going to be a very simple introduction that is not going to be intimidating at all. First of all, if you aren't familiar with what Travis CI or GitHub Actions are, these are two popular tools that provide CI-CD, which stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Delivery. Now, that sounds like a very fancy term, but all it really means is that these tools provide you an easy way to automate your software workflow. What that means in more practical terms is that, for example, if you wanted to test your package every time you make a commit, or more than that, if you want every time that someone submits a PR to your package to run automated tests against that PR, or if you want to automatically run test coverage on your package every time you commit, or if you want to automatically build your package down website every time you make a commit. Anything like that, those are the sort of things that you can do with CI CD. And in the past, people have used Travis to do that, but now more and more of the R developers are moving away from Travis and into GitHub Actions. And of course, Travis and GitHub Actions are not the only two tools that do this. There are many others, such as Jenkins, Circle CI. There are many possibilities. But around 2014, Travis CI became the standard that the R community used for, for testing packages. So every package that I made since 2014 always used Travis CI to automatically make sure that it passes all the CRAN checks every time I make a commit. Let me show you how I currently use Travis CI for my packages. So let me go to one of my packages. Let's say Shiny Disconnect. And if I scroll down, there's a badge here that says build passing. And if I click on it, it'll go to Travis's website. And essentially what Travis does is every time I make a commit, it'll try to install my package from scratch in a, in a fresh machine. And it'll try running all the tests that I have and it'll try running the CRAN submission tests. And if everything passes, then I get a green check mark and it says passing, but if something fails, then this will actually turn red and it'll say that the build is failing. So that's how I currently use Travis. And that's a very popular way that a lot of our developers use Travis on their packages. Recently, in the past year, maybe two, a lot of people in the R community have been moving away from Travis and starting to use GitHub Actions instead. Now, GitHub Actions didn't even exist five years ago. It's one of the new features that GitHub has. As an aside, when GitHub was bought by Microsoft, I remember a lot of people were really concerned about what that would mean to GitHub, but it actually ended up being a, well, at least so far, it ended up being a very good partnership. So far, Microsoft has been doing amazing things on GitHub, um, adding a lot of features, and GitHub Actions is one of those. I personally was kind of dragging my feet on learning to use GitHub Actions because it didn't really need to. Travis was doing everything I needed. But just yesterday, I saw a post from our OpenSci saying that they are now moving from Travis into GitHub Actions. And so I went to that post and I saw their reasoning and I'll show you why that is. So if we go, there's a blog post by Travis from uh, just a few weeks ago saying that they have a new pricing model. So I'm not gonna get into the politics of everything. Travis was bought by someone else um, a while ago. And so there's been a lot of changes there. But that didn't really affect me until I saw this blog post from a few weeks ago that said that they're changing their pricing model at the end of 2020. And when I scroll down, I saw a very important paragraph here that said that if you only use public repositories, which I do because all of my R packages are open source, they're all public. So I'm just using the, the public version of uh, Travis. They will upgrade you to the trial version of their plans with 10,000 credits. And then once you run out of credits, you need to start paying for Travis. Now, 
I'm not opposed to this idea in general. I do understand that open source is hard and, and companies need to charge for the services. But I, I use Travis on all my open source software that I'm not making any money from. So I didn't want to have to start paying um, for this kind of service on my own things that are not commercial. So this was essentially the push that I needed to finally make myself use GitHub Actions instead of Travis. And our OpenSci actually mentioned in that same blog post how they recommend migrating to GitHub Actions. And so I tried it and it actually turns out to be super easy. So for anyone else who wasn't sure how simple it is, um, you can just follow along right now and see that it really is simple. Okay, so I'm gonna take my shiny disconnect package now and move it from Travis to GitHub Actions. So let's go into Shiny Disconnect. And the first thing I'm going to do is remove Travis from my package. So there's a few steps involved. First, I'll remove the actual Travis configuration file. So let's delete that. And then also want to make sure that I remove any references to Travis. So let's do a search for Travis. And so there's two instances of it, one in the R build ignore file. So let's remove it from there. And another one inside the readme. So this is that little badge that we have at the top of the readme. So let's remove the build status badge. Okay, so now I've removed Travis. The next step now is to introduce GitHub Actions to do what we did with Travis before. Let me just commit these files to Git now. So let's take these files and stage them and commit. And we'll write in the message that we are um, removing Travis CI. Commit it. OK. So now we've removed Travis. And the next step is to add GitHub Actions instead. The easiest way to get started with GitHub Actions for your package which is also the way that our OpenSci recommended in the article, is using the use this package. So I'm going to do that. Let's call use this. And then there's a function called use GitHub action check standard. And what this does is it adds a GitHub action to this package that checks this R package and runs all the CRAN checks on it. And there's different CRAN checks that you can run. So I just called the standard one, but you can also do full, which means uh, run it on a lot more operating systems and on more R versions. Uh, there's also one that's that's um, less strict, that uses less operating systems and less R versions than this one. Uh, but I, again, just went with the standard. So if we look here in the console, we can see what exactly this function did. And it also tells us that there's something we need to do. It tells us that we need to copy and paste the following lines, these ones into this readme file. And it also says it's already copied into the clipboard automatically. So if it's already copied, let's just do it right here. It wants me to put it into the readme file. So I'm gonna paste it right here to the readme. And I'll just remove the comments because we don't need those. This is now ready to, to be committed to Git and this should work. But um, let's just take one more step and kind of get a better idea of what actually happened here, what GitHub Actions um, are actually doing for us in this package. So if we look at the steps that the function did for us, um, first of all, it added a git ignore file that is not too interesting. It created a folder and then it wrote this YAML file. So this is where all the action actually happened. No pun intended. <laughs> um, so let's open this file. Let's go rcmd check YAML. Okay, for some reason it's not showing up in there. So I'm gonna have to go to it in the old way, which is going through here. And so this is the file that was added automatically. And it actually looks quite long, but if we go through it step by step or line by line, um, it should most of it make sense to you, especially if you've used Travis before. So the first part here, uh, all it says is that when do we want to run this GitHub action? When do we want to run um, the check, the CRAN check on our package? So we're saying, that we want to run it every time we push to one of these two branches, main or master. Now, the reason there's two branches here is because um, recently GitHub changed the default branch from being called master to being called main. In this package, I know that my 
my branch is still called master, so I'm just going to delete main because that's not necessary for my package. And we also want to run it on every time a pull request is made. So this means whenever someone opens a pull request on this package, on this GitHub repo, it will run this um, this check and it will make sure that their pull request still passes CRAN checks, which is great. So again, I'm just going to delete main because in this repository, master is the name of the branch. Now, the next part here is just giving a name to to this action. This is just going to be like a user-friendly name that we'll see in the browser. So we can call it RCMD check, that's fine. And then if we keep scrolling down, we can see here that there's uh, something called a matrix, a configuration matrix. And this tells us, or this tells GitHub, which operating systems and which R versions to, to run the CRAN check on. So what the current configuration says is that every time we make a git commit or a pull request to this repo, it's going to run on Windows, on Mac, and on Ubuntu. And it's going to run the latest R release on Windows and on Mac. And on Ubuntu 20, it's going to run both the latest R release and also the development version of R. So it's going to run CRAN checks four times on our package every time that we push. Then there's a section here for environment. And what you can do here is you can define um, environment variables. For example, this R remotes no errors from warnings is, is an environment variable that um, the dev tools uses when it installs packages. And you can also put in any other environment variables that you specifically need. So sometimes if your package requires some API token or, or some kind of a secret uh, sensitive token that you don't want to just make it public in your repository, you can add it as an environment variable here. And one thing you should know about environment variables, if you do need to use it, is you can see that it's calling something called uh, secrets here, secrets.github token. So the way you access these secrets is if you go to your GitHub repo, let's go back to, to my GitHub repository. If you go to settings, and then you scroll down to secrets. So I don't have any secrets in this repository right now, but if I did, if there was any kind of any API key or token that I would need to, to use in my GitHub action, I could add it here, new repository secret, and then you can access it using the secrets dots and then whichever secret you, um, you defined in your repository. So that can be useful. And then below the environment are the actual steps that are used by this GitHub action to check the package that it passes all the tests and that it installs properly and all that. I won't go through every single step in detail, but if you do read through them, they kind of make sense. So first we check out the Git repository and then uh, set up R, meaning install R. And we are installing the version that we define to use, either the latest development version or the stable version. Then install pandoc, check what dependencies this package has, um, install any Linux dependencies, any any actual um, non-R libraries that need to be installed on the machine, then install the actual R packages, then run the CRAN check. So these are essentially all the steps you need to do to check your package. So let me go ahead and actually push this to GitHub now so, so that I'll have um, my GitHub actions set up on this repository. So let's go ahead and commit these. And the message will be um, use GitHub actions to check package. I'll push that. OK. And so now if I go back to my, uh, my repository, the latest uh, commit is the one I just did, use GitHub actions to check package. And now we see a little um, yellow symbol here. If you click on it, it shows you that it's running the checks. And you see here four different checks, RCMD checks slash Windows, Mac, Ubuntu, Ubuntu. And those, of course, correspond to, to the four that we saw here in this matrix config, right? So we said that we want to run it on Windows, on Mac, and uh, twice on Ubuntu with two different R versions. So it's kind of nice that it's actually doing them in uh, parallel. Now, while it's running, we can actually go into the Actions tab here. And here there's a tab that says All Workflows. So right now, we only have one GitHub action. Uh, and it was called RCMD Check. That comes from, from this name right here, RCMD Check. You can, of course, have multiple different um, GitHub actions that do different things. Uh, so we just have this one. 
And if I click into it, then again, I'll see these four different um, checks that are happening. And if I click into each one of them, it'll also, you'll also be able to kind of follow along and see uh, what steps it's already done and how long each one has taken so far. So this one, for example, oh, yeah, I scroll down and I saw that it already said that it's done. So you can actually see there's a little check mark beside that one. Let's go to a different one. Let's see how Ubuntu is doing. Ubuntu is currently installing dependencies. Um, so that's fine. I'll just wait until all these four are done. And you can see also that it shows a check mark. So if there was any problem, it would put an X here and it would tell you, well, you would have to go and see what the problem is. So I'm just going to wait until all these four are finished. Okay, so it's finally done. This actually took uh, a bit longer than usual. It took uh, 14 minutes to complete, but um, that's okay because we don't actually have to just sit here and wait. I mean, you make a push, you make a commit, or someone makes a pull request, and it just runs in the background uh, automatically. But now that it's finished, we see a little check mark here, and if I scroll down, it'll tell me that the check is passing. Now, if somebody makes a pull request that will break the package, or if I make a push to the package, to, to the repository, and it'll break any of the checks, then this will become red, and, um, and I'll know that, that something broke. And then if you go to the action of it, if you actually click on the details, you'll be able to kind of see um, exactly where it broke. So that's it. Now I've moved away uh, Shiny Disconnect from Travis to using GitHub Actions. And I'm going to do the same thing for all my other packages before the end of the month, before the end of um, December 2020. And as you could see, it's very, very simple. All I have to do is remove the existing references to Travis from my package and then call that one use this function in the package and it'll just do everything automatically for me. And that's it. It's really that simple. Now, of course, if you do want to do some other more complicated things with GitHub Actions, then it's worth it to to read their documentation and learn how to do other things. Um, there's lots of resources by different R developers about how to do more complex actions. But for me, for now, this is enough. And I hope you found this useful and that it made GitHub Actions a bit less intimidating for you. If you have any questions about GitHub Actions in our packages or any questions about this video in general, feel free to leave a comment under the video. And if you enjoy the video, then feel free to subscribe to the channel so that you'll see all my next R-related and shiny videos. Thank you.